The future is coming and it's coming fast. Hello my friends and how are you doing? Chini 3 has been announced today by Google and it is a world model, a world simulation by AI with a speed, with a quality, with a memory we have never seen before. And I think this is what you and me are very excited about is AI simulating complete worlds that you can interact with. So we have a lot to talk about today. Let's get started. So here we are on their website. Chini 3 is a new frontier as they are saying and it's true for so many reasons because this is not just important for simulating world with AI. This is also important for the AGI understanding the world better or for agents navigating in the world better. So let's have a look at this website here. First of all of course generating a dynamic world so you can move around, you can change the world based on prompts that is pretty cool. You have 24 frames per second. This is amazing because you want to be able to interact with that in real time. And then also a, a resolution of 720p is not too shabby for something like that. Of course, this is something that Google can run because they have massive computing powers. It's not something you're going to run on your gaming PC anytime soon. Now here they have a pretty cool video. You can see a guy painting a wall and the paint actually interacting correctly with that wall. It's really amazing. So you can fulfill your dreams of painting walls. How cool is that? But of course more than that you can also look around in that room but you also see the consistency when we turn back that the paint is still exactly there on the wall. Then of course you have promptable events which means that you can change the world. Here we have a guy in the chicken suit and we have this kind of jet ski and we have a dragon landing. So you can change events that are happening but you can also change the world on its own. You can change the time of day. You can change the time of year. That of course is first of all really cool for playing video games but that is just the start. You can compare it to other models also out there. You have Genie 2, the former version that they had with only a resolution of 360 and it only had 3D environment. Now it's general, so it can also simulate real world. You can navigate, you can use prompt interaction. And one thing that's really amazing here is it went from 10 to 20 seconds to multiple minutes where it can interact. So basically, how long can it remember the elements that are happening in the world when you turn around and the same thing is still there. And also it is happening in real time, which is really, really amazing. Now here we have examples that compare Chini 2 and Chini 3 and you can see here massive improvements both in the quality, in how detailed the world is and of course also in the length of what is generated. Another thing that's extremely important here is modeling physical properties. And here we see multiple videos that are very interesting. For example, this one here with the jet ski is one of my favorites where you can see the jet ski is bumping into these, um, how do you say, light balloons? <laughs> Correct me in the comments, I can't remember. Or it's running into this floating house, floating ship. So that is also pretty amazing that it has this physical simulation. There's also other examples like the wave here that is spilling over onto the street where you again can see interaction between the water and the railing and also the street. Uh, look specifically on how the water is stopped by the railing and pushed into a different direction. That is very impressive. Now another example example I find very very impressive here is this simulation of these many many jellyfish. So it can create vibrant environments with a lot of different elements and their behavior in there. That's pretty amazing. And also while the character is looking around, look at how all these jellyfish are staying in their place. There is no flickering, chittering, jumping around or deforming of the jellyfish. They actually stay 100% where they are supposed to be while you are swimming through them. Here's another example with these many leaves in a rainforest. Again, it's amazing how many different objects are consistently simulated 
in that world, moving around it, but then also going closer to the surfaces and seeing more detail in the surface. That is pretty amazing. I kind of wonder if in the future you will be able to go so close that it enters basically a microscopic level. How amazing would that be? Of course, what you can also do is simulate video games and their interactions, which is pretty amazing. And it also asks the question, can you create a full video game just with one prompt? Let's say you want to have something like that. Let's say you want to say, I want to have a steampunk sci-fi roguelike game in an underground world. Can it figure that out and create that and you can play that game? Are we approaching that future? Because that would be really amazing. And you can come up with some pretty crazy things like, for example, here being a firefly and flying around in an environment is kind of like fantasy world here. Isn't that amazing that you can come up with new experiences, basically? And I feel like this will really enable independent artists to create new and unseen experiences that will really be stunning and otherwise very hard and very expensive to create. Also, this is one of my favorites. I love these kind of like a little bit dystopian fantasy worlds exploring other planets with crazy landscapes and interesting architecture and maybe different physics. How cool is that? At this point, let's talk about why this is so important for AI on multiple levels. Now, the one thing that's really important here is the physical simulation of the world, of interaction of objects in the world and how different substances like water or goo or lava or flames or things like that act and interact with the world. For example, that wood is burning, but metal is melting. Things like that give the AI a better understanding. And this in turn helps you when you prompt something, when you ask for something that the AI can create it in the way you want it to be created. But this is also then interesting for the other way around, basically that the AGI has a better understanding of the world, how it functions, how different things work with each other so the AI on its own can make decisions and come back to you with results and this is not only interesting for when you want to interact with the AI on a human level with AGI having it work for you or having a nice chat with the AI but also for example for things like scientific or design purposes. The more the AI understands about the world and how things work in our world, the more it can also approach new solutions on its own because it can simulate how it would be in a lot of different versions and then present us with the best results. Now there's another element that's important for that and that is agents interacting here in simulated worlds, but of course also this can help agents in real world situations to then also learn from these examples. So that means instead of having a robot navigate in the real world to learn how to interact and how the world is reacting to its interactions, this world simulation can simulate hundreds, thousands, millions of events and learn from these interactions and by that be very sophisticated in navigating also in the real world. So all of that is very, very important and why these world models have such a huge importance and impact for AI development. Now let's have a further look here. You see these two trees in the background. Now, not only are they staying consistent, but as you can see, they are changing completely the location. We see the trees from a different perspective, different locations still it's the same two trees. And then when we walk up to them, it's still these two trees and this is over 40 seconds. So that's also a very nice time span to have. Now, a thing we've talked before about, but it's very interesting to see is the interactivity of these models. So you're in this landscape here and what should happen next? So you can just prompt and say a brown bear should appear and there it goes. You have a brown bear in that world, but maybe another person would decide for something else. So you want to have a horse rider. You want to have this Red Dead Redemption 2 kind of experience. And and there we go. We have a cowboy riding on a horse through that landscape. And that's really, really amazing.
amazing because it creates individual experiences for everybody even though it is the same world. Now the interesting part about that is not just you can prompt in the world but also agents can move in the world based on prompts and this is especially interesting for the Google SEMA AI agent. SEMA means scalable, instructable, multi-world agent. You have an agent that not only can play different video games and understand what is going on here. You can see it here as a lot of different video games. It can play, for example, No Man's Sky, interact there, fly around and grind for different equipment, build different things. That is gameplay and that already is very nice. But the important thing here is that it can also be instructed to do things. So when say, hey, I need these kind of resources, go out in the universe, find a planet, search for it, and then gather these resources and build this object for me, it can do that for you because it understands how to navigate in that world and how this world works. And that is way more than just playing a game on its own. Now let's talk a little bit about the limitations of Genie 3. One of the limitations is that it has a limited action space. What that means is even though it can do a lot of different actions in different environments in a sophisticated way, it doesn't mean that it can do everything because it's trained on certain actions that it knows how they work. So you could say, for example, ride a bike and it can do that. But if you say, I'm just making this up now, but build me a house, it might not be able to know how to do that step by step. Step. So there's a limitations, this scale of actions that can do and the understanding of the world and how to do it in the world will of course grow over time. Another limitation is the simulation of interaction between different agents. So right now your gaming character can do a lot of cool things in the world, but simulating other characters to interact with you in a way that makes sense and it also works is still a huge challenge. And I can really understand that because because interacting in a useful and purposeful way between characters is on a completely different level. And you probably might know that from your real life. It's not easy dealing with other people, but being on your own is always a fun time. Of course, also another limitation is the simulation of real world locations. So while it can simulate the look and feel of a location, it can't, of course, exactly down to the little elements replicate that location. An interesting part that doesn't work good right now is simulating or rendering text unless it's part of the text prompt that you have written. And that kind of, again, really reminds me when you dream Often we can't really read text. It's actually one of the best tests to know that you're dreaming. And so it's really interesting that AI has that very same problem that we have. So overall, I'm absolutely amazed by this announcement. I hope we get to experience this ourselves soon. And I also really hope that this is going to be in a price range where everybody can experience it and have some fun with that because I feel like this is going to be a core technology in a couple of years. So we need to be able to have access and also be able to afford that access. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye.